This is the home of one of the world's most loved animals, the giant panda. In China, the giant panda is a national treasure. For thousands of years, it has featured in the country's art and literature and held a special place in the people's hearts. But during the past few decades, the giant panda has been brought close to extinction. The quest to save the species has made it the symbol of modern China's conservation efforts. Throughout the rest of the world, the giant panda has come to represent the struggle of all endangered species. For the people living alongside wild pandas, saving them has become part of village life. But for a small boy in western China, the panda is simply a friend. According to fossil records, giant pandas were widespread in China 100,000 years ago. At one time, they also occurred in northern Vietnam and Burma. Climate changes reduced their range. In more recent times, human development has restricted their distribution even further. Today, the species occurs naturally in only six isolated mountain areas in southwestern China, in forests where the bamboo they need to survive is plentiful. This is Lao Lin and his grandson Lin Lin. They lead a traditional village life at the foot of the Chungai Mountains, one of the few places where wild pandas can still be found. Caring for injured pandas has become a common event for Lao Lin, his grandson, and other villagers like them. For Lin Lin, however, one rescue in the winter of 1995 became a treasured memory. The boy was on a trek with his grandfather to learn about the wilderness of the mountains. While most other mammals are hibernating, pandas remain awake and alert right through the coldest months on a never-ending search for nourishment. have huge appetites and food in these mountains is becoming increasingly scarce. Lin Lin knew there was a possibility he could chance upon a panda. He'd gone off to explore on his own when he noticed blood in the snow. The trail was fresh and he followed it, unsure of what to expect. It wasn't long before he tracked down the source of the blood. Lin Lin knew that without help, the injured panda would die. He made sure it was comfortable and offered it food. But there was little more he could do on his own. 
So he ran to get his grandfather, hoping that the panda would survive until help arrived. Chinese scientists began studying pandas in the wild in the 1940s, and the first reserves were established 20 years later. Millions of dollars are now being poured into panda conservation. As few as 1,000 giant pandas are thought to now survive in the wild. Saving each and every one has become crucial. many threats. Poaching is an ongoing problem. They are also often caught by accident in snares set for other animals. The Chinese government has responded to poaching with severe penalties, long prison terms and sometimes even death sentences. But the market for panda pelts, although small, is lucrative and there is always someone prepared to take the risk. Compounds have been set up in panda territory to study the species and care for orphaned and injured animals. Scientific expertise at these centers is often sophisticated and researchers go to great lengths to save the animals. In the villages, the people make do with more traditional methods. Lao Lin carried the young panda, found by Lin Lin, back to his home, where he could suture its wound and nurse the animal back to health. Lao Lin has been rescuing and caring for pandas for more than 40 years. Yeah. 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 The immediate ancestors of giant pandas were carnivores. But millions of years ago, they turned to the leaves, stems and shoots of bamboo as their main food. While pandas have some unique adaptations to this narrow diet, they retain many carnivorous characteristics. Herbivores normally have very long digestive tracts containing bacteria to help break down tough fibrous plant material. But the panda still has the short digestive tract of a meat eater, which is inefficient at breaking down bamboo. As a result, Pandas must eat an extraordinary amount of bamboo to obtain the energy and nutrients they need. Adults can attain body weights of over 100 kilograms. To survive, they must eat almost a fifth of their body weight in bamboo daily. When food is plentiful, a giant panda can consume over 40 kilograms in a day by following a cycle of eating for eight hours and then napping for up to four hours. Millions of years of munching on bamboo have led to the evolution of huge cheek muscles. These provide the jaws with the crushing power needed to break up hard, fibrous stems. In another adaptation to their diet, the wrist bones of each front paw have become enlarged and protrude from the palms to form digits known as pseudo-thumbs. They work like our own thumbs to give the panda remarkable dexterity with its hands. Thank you. 
Pandas are normally found in mixed forests up to altitudes of about 3,000 meters, wherever bamboo is plentiful. Not so long ago, they commonly fed in lowland forests as well, but agriculture now restricts their lower range. Giant pandas share their high mountain habitats with other unique and endangered species. Giant salamanders, which can grow to nearly two meters in length, live and breed in the fast-flowing mountain streams. Although legally protected, these amphibians are threatened by a black market trade in their body parts for Chinese medicine. The rare ox-like tarkin can still occasionally be seen crashing through the undergrowth. The coat of this creature is thought to have inspired the ancient Greek legend of Jason and the Golden Fleece. Golden monkeys swing acrobatically through the treetops. These primates can survive extreme cold conditions that few other monkey species could tolerate. The giant panda's closest living relative, the red panda, is also found in the same areas. But these days, it is exceptionally rare in the wild and is more often seen in zoos. Red pandas also feed almost exclusively on bamboo. They too have developed pseudo thumbs. The relationship between the two panda species and other animals still puzzles scientists. Giant pandas have much in common with bears. Red pandas, however, share many features with the raccoon family. There are about a hundred giant pandas in zoos. Most are in China. As small as it is, this population is significant. Captive breeding programs have been underway for many years. Their success may turn out to be vital to the future of the species. There are, however, many problems with breeding pandas in captivity. Pandas normally live solitary lives, meeting only to breed after they reach sexual maturity at between four and six years of age. Courtship is a long, drawn-out affair. Keepers find it difficult to recreate the conditions suitable for mating. The female is on heat for only a very brief period, between 12 and 25 days each spring. She is fertile for less than a week. The male mounts the female frequently during this period and then loses interest and returns to his solitary life. After conception, embryos enter a state resembling suspended animation. They will only become fully implanted if food is plentiful. During poor conditions, they fail to develop further, sparing the mother the additional stress of pregnancy. Young can be born between 12 and 22 weeks after conception. Newborns are tiny and hairless. They each weigh only about 100 grams, less than one thousandth of the mother's size.
two cubs are common. In the wild, only one usually survives. Infant pandas barely leave their mother's arms for the first three weeks of life and suckle for as much as six hours a day. Babies are constantly licked by their mother. Her saliva is thought to act as a powerful antibiotic. This may partly explain why hand-raised panda infants, without this attention, succumb easily to disease. About half of all pandas born in captivity die as babies, even with devoted human care. By about four weeks, infants have developed the distinctive black and white markings of their parents. In captivity, this is a time for postnatal health checks. In the wild, this is when the mother would begin resuming her normal routines. Infants stay with their mothers until about 18 months of age, although they are usually fully weaned by about nine months. Despite having a normally agreeable nature, full-grown pandas can become aggressive if provoked. The young are vulnerable if left alone, but healthy adults do not have many natural predators. Only occasionally are they overcome by leopards or wild dogs. Climbing trees is one way for pandas to avoid potential attackers. They also appear to climb for sheer pleasure, scaling trees to bask in the sunshine, or simply to frolic. The panda's naturally playful and unthreatening nature is one of the features that makes this animal so loved. After Lin Lin rescued his panda, he quickly began to develop a rapport with it. He named his new friend Yao Yuan, and during the weeks that followed, a strong bond developed between the boy and the panda. The main threat to pandas is destruction of their habitat. Clearing of forests not only destroys bamboo stands, panda mothers prefer to make dens for their young in large hollow trees, and these are also lost. Habitat destruction is even worse for pandas because of the unusual life cycle of their staple food, bamboo. Bamboo reproduces by flowering en masse, 
setting seed, and then dying. It can then take years for the seeds to grow and become a reliable source of food for pandas. This natural dieback occurs at different intervals in different species of bamboo. In most, it occurs in 60 to 120 year cycles. In the past when this happened, it was not a great threat to pandas. They would simply switch to a species that was still in healthy growth. But now, human encroachment means that pandas usually only have one bamboo species to exploit in their forests, so that bamboo dieback means starvation. Logging and agriculture have also isolated the remaining panda populations into less than 30 separate communities, each made up of fewer than 50 animals. The minimum number necessary for a population to avoid the effects of inbreeding is estimated to be 500. Without conservation measures to ensure that genetic exchange takes place between the remaining populations, wild pandas are destined for extinction. Pandas are often forced to leave their normal habitat when food is scarce or they are looking for a mate. They sometimes wander confused through villages. Because pandas pose no threat and don't destroy crops, locals are very tolerant of these visits and usually help lost animals on their way. Linlin knew all along that Yao Yuan should one day be returned to the forest. But it was something he preferred not to think about. With the constant attention of the boy and his grandfather, the panda's recovery progressed rapidly. And soon, Yao Yuan began to wreak havoc. Ooh. 
By then, Lin Lin and Yao Yuan had become like siblings, and the boy sometimes scolded the panda as if he were a naughty little brother. Lin Lin's life began to revolve around the young panda. Even school couldn't distract the boy's thoughts from his friend. Although it has been mentioned in Chinese texts for at least 3,000 years, the giant panda first came to the attention of the West in 1869. But it wasn't until the mid-1930s that the first live giant panda was brought out of China. It was displayed in Chicago's Brookfield Zoo. Since then, the giant panda has become one of the biggest attractions for zoos throughout the world. Despite this, there are fewer than 15 giant pandas in zoos outside of China. Not so long ago, they were encouraged to perform and do tricks for paying crowds. The sentiment now, however, both inside China and overseas, is that this is unacceptable. Pandas in zoos are still proudly exhibited but with much more attention paid to the needs of the animals. When not involved in captive breeding programs, they are used to raise awareness of the plight of the species. to make money out of these animals. The panda has the same commercial clout for the Chinese as Mickey Mouse does for the Americans. Known commonly in China as Da Zhong Ma, the great bear cat, the panda was once thought to have magical powers that could ward off evil spirits and natural disasters. Ancient Chinese emperors kept them as pets. Today, everywhere you go in China, there are images of pandas, from traditional drawings to flamboyant neon signs. The problems faced by the species have been the subject of several national and international wildlife conferences. The best hope for the species lies in habitat protection. As part of this, there is widespread support for the planting of bamboo corridors between the isolated wild populations, so that they may mix and breed. Such strategies are included in the National Conservation for the Giant Panda and its Habitat, developed by the Chinese Ministry of Forestry, with the assistance of the World Wildlife Fund. Some $40 million US is expected to be spent on the program by the year 2002. Meanwhile, the villagers who live alongside the pandas continue in their own way to protect the species.
Almost two months after Lin Lin found Yao Yuan, Lao Lin took in a second panda which was unwell, and he treated it with herbal medicine. However, there was conflict between the two animals. Lin Lin was relieved that it took only a few days before his grandfather decided the second panda was well enough to be released back into the mountains where it was found. He was glad to see it go, but its release made him realize it would soon be Yao Yuan's turn. By the time spring arrived, Yao Yuan was becoming restless and showing signs that he was ready to be returned to the forests. Lao Lin asked for divine assistance in choosing a lucky day for the release, and a date was set. Lin Lin had only a few short days left with his friend. After school, Lin Lin would rush through his daily chores to make the most of the time he and Yao Yuan had left together.
When the day arrived for Yao Yuan to leave the village, Lao Lin let the boy sleep in. He knew the journey would be a hard and sad one for his grandson. Scientists involved with panda research return rescued animals to the wild whenever possible. Releases, however, are never a simple matter of opening a cage and showing the animals the forests. They require careful planning. Pandas are not very adaptable creatures. It appears that at an early age, they form a permanent and inflexible mental map of their environment. This tells them where to find water, the best bamboo stands, and other matters crucial for their survival. It's thought that this makes it almost impossible for mature pandas to adjust to new areas. And so it is best to return rehabilitated animals as close as possible to where they were found. If and when captive breeding programs begin producing enough animals for wild releases, it has been suggested that human foster parents may be needed to teach pandas essential survival skills. It would be a long trek back up into the mountains to release Yao Yuan. Lin Lin helped with the necessary preparations and sadly contemplated life without his panda companion. Finally, the journey began.
Along the way, Lin Lin spent one last evening with Yao Yuan. He understood why the panda had to be returned to its home, but the prospect of losing a friend is always hard. Scientists predict that without drastic action, the giant panda could be extinct outside of zoos within 40 years. Government officials and conservationists are working together to implement strategies to prevent that from happening. There is a very real possibility, however, that Lin Lin's grandchildren will never have the privilege of seeing a panda in the wild. Time is running out for the giant panda. Each and every rescue and release by villagers like Laolin and Lin Lin gives the species a better chance. Perhaps this little boy's grandchildren will also be able to enjoy the experience of living with the giants. <laughs>